Welcome to Listertainment, the channel that promises entertainment, but it never delivers. Whenever one of my favorite fighters is going to fight against an undefeated champion, I always think that they stand no chance. I mean, the opponent is undefeated, they became champions, so they must be extremely good. Well, on this list today, we will see 10 undefeated champions who got destroyed by the challenger. Many of the winners in these fights were huge underdogs, but somehow they rose to the occasion and weren't bothered by the pressure, as they themselves became stars after these events. If you happen to like this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to turn on those notifications. And please let me know in the comments, which of the undefeated champions do you think will be the next one to lose? Roy Jones Jr. and Montel Griffin first fought in 1997, when Jones was the undefeated champion and Griffin was challenging for the title. But this fight is not the one in question, as the fight was very close, but Jones hurt Griffin and when trying to close out the fight, he hit Griffin while he was on the ground, so he got disqualified. Jones comes in and lands the right hand lead again, and a couple of left hooks, and Griffin's knee goes down, and Jones... In the rematch, Griffin was the undefeated champion with a record of 27 wins and 0 losses. They were competing for the light heavyweight title. The rematch was nothing like the first fight as Jones looking for vindication came in with a mission and ended the fight in only 151 seconds. Just starting the fight, 20 seconds in, Jones had already knocked down Griffin. Then he started stalking his prey, hitting him with power punches until there were only 42 seconds left when he knocked him down again with a leaping left hook. This time, Griffin was unable to get up in time and Jones became the champion once again, although not undefeated anymore. Back in 2019, Mikey Garcia was an undefeated champion looking to go up two weight divisions in order to fight in the highly competitive welterweight division. He should have started by fighting some of the top contenders in order to get used to the weight difference, but no. This man decided to go to the very top and challenge the undefeated champion Errol Spence Jr. Hook. I haven't seen that left hook yet, and that's just, you know, that's too hard, especially when you got a jet. I mean, score points, that's not going to win him this fight. It's too far gone already, you know. Right, but he needs to throw some punches. At well, the beginning of this round, guys. He's looking, it seems like he's looking for that perfect punch. That perfect punch is never going to be there. Yeah, he's got Mikey Garcia was taught a real boxing lesson in this fight. He was completely outmatched by Spence and was never able to do anything significant in the fight. He almost seemed to be a little scared. In the end, he survived all the hits in all the rounds, but he did end up losing every single round on the judges' scorecard, which was well deserved. Hopefully, he can continue to work up in this division and become champion one day. Slipped a couple of big punches and, you know, here in Arlington. Mikey Garcia said, Errol reminds me of me. <laughs> well, Spence just keeps coming, especially in this last round. He's, he's trying. This is one of those fights where you are hoping that the undefeated champion and Adrian Broner loses because of his cocky attitude. Marcos Maidana from Argentina was a challenger in this fight. And Marcos is the fan favorite because he always puts on a good show and is very willing to trade shots with anybody. There were also tons of crazy things done in this fight. Have to get active. Oh, wow. Maidana was able to knock down Broner twice in this fight and was able to beat him up pretty good. And this was the first time Broner had ever been on the canvas. Maidana, that sticks another right hand. Broner goes down. Body with another chopping right hand. And there's a lot of of how these rounds react. Oh, oh. You could even see Broner's sorry state when he left the ring early without giving any interviews. Broner was supposed to be the next big thing, but since this unexpected loss, he has lost three more times. His rise as the next big star is over. This is the most recent fight on this list when Deontay Wilder met with Tyson Fury to break the deadlock from their first fight. Wilder was the undefeated champion and had an incredible knockout record. But that came to an end when he fought Fury the first time, where I thought he had also lost. He basically lost 8 to 10 rounds in that first fight and only had a great 12th round. In this last fight early this year, Fury was again able to dominate with his boxing skills, but since he worked out his power with a new trainer, he was able to knock down Wilder in the third round. Oh! 
he continued to smash Wilder for the rest of the fight until he beat him up so bad that Wilder's corner had to throw in the towel. The third fight will be good as long as Wilder decides to learn to box and throw more combinations to set up his god-given right hand. Guillermo Rigando was the king at the bantamweight division, but decided to step up to the featherweight division in order to take on Vasily Lomachenko, who might be the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter on the planet. Rigando was an undefeated champion with an incredible amateur career, winning gold at the Olympics, but in this fight, he came up against another gold medal winner. You know, if Lomachenko's pulling and it takes anything, that was a warning against so much as it'll be a point next time. Oh. But let me Vasily Lomachenko was able to use his incredible footwork to put a real boxing lesson on one of the best boxers on the planet. Rigando looked overwhelmed for much of the fight, but according to him, it was because he hurt his hand in the second round and could not use it much after that. He eventually refused to come back out of his corner after the sixth round, making him the fourth consecutive fighter to quit against Lomachenko. Necessarily looking kind of from Lomachenko. There's nothing saying you're right, and, and there he's been held. See, there's a difference that, that pivot, that spin on the free. Back in 2011, Juan Manuel Lopez was a top 10 pound for pound boxer with an undefeated record with 30 wins and 27 knockouts. He was taking on Orlando Salido, who did not have a very good record with 34 wins and 11 losses. This fight did end up with a bit of a controversial referee stoppage in the 8th round, but I strongly believe that Salido would have finished this fight later on. Juan Manuel Lopez tried to fight back against Salido, who is very much a pressure fighter who takes on incredible amounts of hits, but just keeps coming forward. But he just couldn't keep going. That's it. This is it. Close to it. Juan Manuel Lopez, one big shot away from being no more as he undefeated, and Salido has pulled it off. For all the fans who thought this was a one-time thing, they had a rematch and Salido was able to win again via a 10th round knockout. Nassim Hamed was the undefeated champion when he fought Marco Antonio Barrera back in 2001. This is the fight that really made me a fan of boxing because I was able to see one of the biggest surprises in boxing. Hamed was a 3-1 favorite in this fight and he wasn't even taking this challenge seriously since he thought he could beat Barrera easily. Well, he paid for that cockiness. It seems power that Barrera is fighting the way he is. Barrera was really angry coming into this fight, and he showed it throughout the fight with various events that occurred. He would hit Hamed back every time he tried to get a little punch in after the referee separated them. He then slammed Hamed into the corner, losing a point in the process. But he did not want to let himself be pushed around by Hamed. That's true. Too much shield. Barrera pounds Nassim into the ring post. He basically taught Hamed a boxing lesson that night and won by unanimous decision. It was amazing. Ronda Rousey has always rubbed me the wrong way. Her attitude is really shitty and acts like she is some sort of god sent down to put women's MMA on the map. And she certainly did do that, but when she faced Holly Holm back in 2015, she was an undefeated champion. Everybody hyped her up a ton, and it was well deserved for the most part, but I always thought that her stand-up game sucked. Holly was able to expose this to a great extent. Holm was a great boxer before fighting for the UFC, so her stand-up game is pretty perfect. For the most part, she was able to avoid getting caught by Rousey and taken to the ground, where Rousey is at her best, and made her miss countless punches. She was able to get in with good combinations and hits and get out before Rousey could even react. She then knocked her out in the second round. This is probably the worst beating of a champion in recent memory. Mike Tyson was the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion back in 1990 when Buster Douglas came in as a 42-1 underdog and knocked him out. Tyson during this time was relentless. He was the best pound for pound fighter on the planet. Everybody expected to see another one of Tyson's quick finishes, but that never came. Douglas used a very effective strategy of trying to keep Tyson away from getting inside by using his jab, and if he did manage to get inside, he would tie him up or move away. He was able to hurt Tyson briefly in the fifth round, but Tyson came back and knocked him down in the eighth. 
Then we came to the 10th round, where Douglas knocked Tyson down for the first time in his career, and he was counted out by the referee. Everybody knows about this knockout because those odds were unprecedented. Muhammad Ali was able to take down the undefeated heavyweight champion in George Foreman back in 1974 during the Rumble in the Jungle. Foreman was a huge puncher and everybody thought that Ali would come in with his amazing boxing skills and move around Foreman while getting in some quick combinations, but Ali had other plans. Ali decided to fight by using his right hand leads and by using his famous rope dope where he would lean on the ropes and move around while Foreman threw punches that missed or hit his arms. Ali was even able to taunt Foreman because every single time a good hit landed on Ali, he would tell George, hey, they told me you could punch, George. Is that all you have? Then in the eighth round, Ali came in with a five punch combination that finished off big George Foreman in dramatic fashion. Fighters losing their undefeated records will always be big news, especially when they lose it in a championship fight. I think that this makes things fun because we all expect the champion to win, but when the underdog wins, it makes us pretty happy. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.